Hello everyone, it's Rytek. We meet again for a new video. These are two products that I have just discovered from the brand lest I wonder if I don't have the ideal combo for streamers and YouTubers. If you ever want a video for each product, a much more detailed video, don't hesitate to say so in the comments. Here, I will mainly talk about the features and not the products themselves because otherwise the video would be much too long. What do I have in this video to present to you? Well, I have the Less 8 Connect 2 sound card and also the Less Ray microphone. Why do I think these two products are ideal for YouTubers and streamers? I'll show you that right away. And you will have understood, it will revolve around voice recording. If you are interested in this kind of video, don't hesitate to tell me in the comments of course. So, I will show you a software and also the features of this microphone which are extremely interesting and quite innovative. Here we are on the Lewit 8 Control Center software, a software that is connected to the Lewit 8 Connect 2, and which has quite a few interesting things. As you will have understood, for the moment, I have not activated anything on the microphone or on the software the WI Control Center. Quickly, I will go straight away because it will allow me to avoid saturation of the microphone and maybe you can already hear a difference quickly. If I deactivate it and I approach like this, it should saturate and now I approach. It should be a lot or better. This is already an option that is extremely interesting. Okay, now you are saying to yourself that's good but what's special? Because your clip guard can be found for example on the Delgado software nothing really crazy for the moment but there is not only that. First of all, we can find the little button here which allows us what? To simply automatically adjust the gain. I'm going to the test is now finished and it decided that in relation to my speaking rate, how I was speaking, the intensity at which I was speaking, the optimal gain was 38. Now if I deactivate the clip guard, well, I no longer have any saturation but if I get a little too close, maybe we can find some and I'm going to put it back to 60, because on certain features you'll see, well it will reduce the microphone gain a little bit, but nothing crazy either. And there maybe you're saying to yourself, okay it's not too bad but what else is interesting we have an auto setup here we're going to click on it and simply hop there i'm going to put the window back here we simply have the software that will guide us to simply put the best possible settings maybe for the gain i have a doubt but also for the compressor and the denizer we can adjust this for a microphone for a guitar or a combo of the two we're obviously going to take the microphone and we have the choice between condenser microphones that need 48 volts phantom power and dynamic microphones with different settings that it will take into account. So I'm going to take the 48 volts on because this microphone needs 48V at the level of low cut, so it's explained. So unfortunately it's in English. I don't know if we can put it in French. Maybe on the Mac, there is no French version. Well, a little translation and it's quickly understandable. So either we can put the low cut on. It tells us that it's perfect for recording vocals. It removes the low frequencies that are annoying and it's ideal for most applications. We can also put it off and it allows us to record instruments that have low frequencies. Personally, I'm going to put it off because I don't have a big voice either and we can see you on the camera by the way. Yes. Yeah, well, say hello to the story. Hello story. Okay, we're going to turn it off. Okay, now the software will simply analyze my voice. Let's test your sound. Okay, now the software will simply analyze my voice. Let's test your sound. So I click on start and for now I'm going to speak for 10 seconds into the microphone which will simply analyze my voice, the timbre and everything, the gain and so on and then offer me a configuration. There, we have the choice between three options. The clean mode, the warm mode and the vivid mode. The clean mode is simple, it's the most neutral and that's what allows for better editing if you ever do post-processing editing. We have the warm mode which allows for something a little deeper in the voice. That's the impression it gave me in any case. What I'm going to take because I have a rather high-pitched voice and we have the vivid mode which will simply increase the high-pitched part of the voice and reduce the bass a little. So I'm going to warm. And there, he says to us do you want to use the compressor? We still have some explanations which are welcome. What does the compressor allow? To set a constant level at the wave level, that at the signal level, it will seem to be a little heavier, that the signal will be a little stronger and that it's ideal and that it's ideal to have a sound from the start that is finished, that doesn't need post-processing. 
If we simply put it off, it's the raw version and we can simply do some behind, at least some retouching. So I'm going to put it on. And finally, do we want to use the reduce background nose? So it's the noise reduction. He tells us that it's ideal for streaming, to avoid ambient noise and that if we remove it, it's excellent for recording, so recording and avoiding impromptu cuts and that it allows us to have the raw signal again and to adjust that and make adjustments in post-processing. Personally, I activate it because that's it, it's simply going to do tests and we're going to have to make complete silence. Here we go, there you go. And once finished, so he asks us if we want to activate the clip guard or not to avoid any distortion during recording. It can still save you recordings, that's pretty good. Ideal for streaming or so they tell me online meetings, so basically the video conferences tell us that if we deactivate it again we have the pure version, we can do post-processing. He also tells us that it's good for recording, personally, I would advise him to activate it all the time, especially for those who are not like me Ingesons, it avoids bad surprises. So, I'm going to activate it, and we have a summary of everything that has done us. So, the 48 volts is activated, we have deactivated the locket filter, the gain level, he armed it at 40, the warm style preamp, we have activated the denoiser, the compressor and the clip guard. We click on finish, and there, normally, he has set everything correctly for me. If you have headphones on to listen to this video, normally compared to the beginning, you can hear a difference. Already there alone, I find that it is a simply incredible tool to simply have a minimum sound quality when you don't know anything about it, you don't know how to adjust your microphone in terms of settings and so on, I think it's great. Obviously, you have the possibility to fine tune this, but that's not really the goal of this video. There are a lot of software programs that do that. Being able to manage the equalizer, the denoiser, the compressor as best as possible. There, it's done on a lot of software. Here, what really interests us is the fact that everything is automated and to see the result that it gives. First of all, you can tell me in the comments what you think between the beginning where everything was deactivated and between now where everything is activated and where we've done all the auto setup. Okay, now we're going to move on to the microphone. The microphone where there are two functions that are extremely interesting. It's the ray that has simply incorporated a, uh, we can talk about autofocus at the gain level and at the mute level because this microphone will simply allow you to manage the gain as best as possible when you approach the microphone or when you move back. And the mute function will also use the distance to mute or not the microphone. Quickly, how does it work? Well, in the microphone, we have two integrated letter sensors that will allow us to best measure the distance we are from the microphone. A small drawback here too, I must mention it, it only works in the axis of the microphone. If you ever use the BIA microphone like that for example, well it will not work. You absolutely have to be in front of the microphone. That said, we will see what is interesting in these two technologies. In the first, we will talk about Aura. What does it allow? Quite simply, as I said just before, to do an autofocus on the track. There, currently, the URA is to activate. So, if I get closer to the microphone, you have a proximity effect. You hear me a little louder. But on the other hand, if I move back, for example, I go there, you hear me a little less well. I am a little further away. And if I want my voice to be at the same level all the time whether I'm getting closer or moving back, I have to be the one who manages it on the track. If I'm closer, I have to lower my voice and if I'm further away, I have to raise my voice. What is it going to do? Quite simply, he's the one who will manage the gain so that the waves and at least the recording are equal no matter where I am. And that's where it's extremely interesting. I'm now going to activate ERA. There you go, now it's active. And the microphone now detects where I am in relation to it. We have bars that simply represent the proximity to the microphone if I'm close or far away and normally by keeping the same level at the level of my voice whether I'm getting closer or moving back normally the level is the same no matter where I am. So obviously that's not going to remove the resonance from the room. The further away I am, the more you're going to hear the resonance. On the other hand, the closer I am, the less you will hear the resonance. But on the other hand, at the level of my voice it will be the same every time, all the time, no matter where I am. Especially since here, I am exaggerating as much as possible. Once again, you have to have headphones to feel the difference. Do not hesitate to tell me in the comments whether or not you hear a difference. And finally, there is the mute button. So, obviously, if I press the button once and then press it again, the microphone is no longer muted. 
It is a button that we have on the microphone but it does not simply cut the microphone. You may have noticed it, but in general, when we have a mute button on a microphone, well we hear a little click in the sound recording. There, normally, you have not heard anything because instead of cutting the sound or cutting the microphone, in fact, it will reduce the sound quite strongly to simply not hear anything anymore. And that's where it's interesting because by activating the mute function via distance, well that will allow you to simply cut the microphone, no matter where I am and will not have this noise either. I'm going to activate it now. So, I haven't yet understood how to finally adjust the distance at which I want to mute the microphone. I'll have to learn that. I received it today, EH, the microphone, the sound card, it's been a few days already, but I wanted to have both to make the video. So, I'm going to put myself at this distance. I'm now going to activate the mute function with autofocus. So for that, I have to hold down the mute button. I'm getting closer here. Can you hear me now? And that's where it's powerful enough without touching anything. I'm getting closer. Now, can you hear me? I absolutely don't need to click on a mute button to mute or not the microphone. And it works extremely well. I did tests for 10 minutes to see what the limits are or not and frankly extremely interesting. So for example, I'm in the middle of a stream and I simply want the microphone to cut when I move away, we can say that it's a safety feature. If I ever forget to mute the microphone myself, will I leave and that's what's extremely incredible, is that there you go, you can hear me via the camera, but if I put the microphone back, hop, there you go, I come back here, can you hear me? Hop, there, I adjusted the microphone to simply be further away when I speak. So, be careful because it's quite sensitive at the sensor level. So there, I can speak up to there. If I come back there, now, you can hear me as I told you. The negative point is that it only works in the axis of the microphone. If we ever deviate from the axis, the features become much less interesting, or even useless. Although useless, it depends why. For example, if I'm next to my microphone and I don't want to record when I'm next to my microphone, if I put my hand there, there on the other hand, you hear me because the leading sensor captures my hand which is at a sufficient distance to activate the microphone. If I remove my hand so it can be practical or not depending on the use you want. If you ever want it to be a distance all around the microphone, it won't be possible, it's necessarily in the axis. But if you want an autofocus only in the axis, well then it becomes interesting. And that's why I find this microphone and this sound card extremely interesting for streamers and YouTubers. Especially for those who are like me alone in managing their microphone, sound quality and so on and who know absolutely nothing about CL sound rules with Lewitt Control Center, we can simply avoid the bad gains which will simply lead to distortion. If you want to be sure, you have the clip guard which allows you to avoid distortion or at least saturation. You have the auto setup which allows you to adjust the gain, the deniser and the compressor which simply prevents us from having a poorly adjusted gain, a completely misadjusted deniser and also a poorly adjusted compressor. And a voice that can be downright weird or untimely cuts or in short, stupid stuff. And with the microphone, we have a pretty crazy combo which is, for example, the fact that if you move a lot back and forth when you speak, instead of having levels rise and fall during recording and having to adjust the gain each time so that everything is at the same level, it's annoying. Here, it's done automatically upon recording, which means that you avoid post-processing which is quite annoying for YouTube videos. And live, that's not possible to have post-processing, unless you do a best of where you rebroadcast your live, but if you have two hours to adjust each time to have the same level, it's just going to be too long and too boring. Here, it's done right away, you don't have to touch anything, it'll be perfect straight away. It's just too good. And you have the mute function that allows you to do without a button. And when you don't want to record your voice anymore, you almost just have to turn the microphone. So, you haven't heard anything. What I said is that you just have to turn the microphone, hop, it's mute, you can't hear me anymore and I don't have to touch the button, I just have to move the microphone closer or further away and it works extremely well. I bring it back there, hop, it's unmuted. There you go, easy. Honestly, it works really well. I don't understand why there isn't a single French YouTuber who has talked about this microphone yet because it's a gem. 
What I advise you of course is to adjust the distance you want it to mute because if you go too far, it will mute the microphone and then to catch up it's dead. Adjust this aspect especially well especially when you're streaming. When you're recording YouTube, you can turn it off at most, it's not too bad unless you really really avoid it when you start a video because I don't know why. In short, you want to be sure that it's muted. That's it, that's about it for this video which focused on the features of this Lewitt Ray microphone and the Lu Connect 2. If you ever want a dedicated video and a more in-depth test on the Lewitt Ray microphone and the Les 8 Connect 2 sound card, don't hesitate to say so in the comments, I'll make a specific test video on the microphone and the dark card because just on these two to say whether it's on their manufacturing quality or the features or the ergonomics. Frankly both are little gems I think and for prices that are not excessively expensive for what they offer. Clearly, there were arguments and marketing to be able to say, ah, so we're selling it super expensive because our products are incredible, and yet I find that it's a very reasonable price for what is offered. In short, I hope you enjoyed this video, don't hesitate to read it in the comments and if you ever have any questions, don't hesitate to ask them in the comments either. Don't hesitate to give it a little thumbs up if you like the video, to subscribe if you haven't already to be informed of the next videos, and I tell you and I tell you until the next one. Ciao everyone. Possibly maybe an auto cut video soon because there is the mode cutting repetitions which has come out. I have done for the moment a first test but it is annoying and it smells a little bit eh, it's not there yet, I think that French is not very well understood, but if ever it works perfectly, oh the gainant that I will gain in video, oh lala, it will be great.